Welcome back. Go. Oh shit. Let me drink my Prince of Dark Darkness fluid first. <coughs> shit. <coughs> I was holding that shit in for like ten minutes trying to get this fucking stream going. <coughs> Fuck me. Anyway, welcome back to a brand spanking episode of the Frostbite Halloween edition. As you can tell from my cool little graphic in the upper left-hand corner. Anyway, it's me, your hostess with Moses, your bestie, the bestie, the one, the only, the incomparable Vivian Frost, back with another episode, already having technical, I feel like one hair is just tickling my fucking lips and nose, and I just like, where are you? I don't see it, so it must be coming from the side. Anyway, your hostess with Moses, your bestie, the bestie, the cringiest and most ghoulish cross-dresser on YouTube, back with another brand Bank a new episode, Halloween edition. Uh, tonight, uh, usually once a year during October, I do this. I do another decade. The top, the best horror movie each year from 1981 all the way to 19, or between 1981 and 1990. Let me go handy dandy notes up here. So, every year, now the 80s are a banner year for horror movies, you know, the Silver Age, uh, if you will. And there's a ton of fucking good movies. Like, like, Legit, this each year was like hard to like, which one do I think is the best? Which one should I pick? Or which one is, is my consideration for the best? And I think I did a pretty good job. There obviously should be debate because there, like some of these were like agonizing, like fuck. But I went with my guts. So anyway, 1981, I was a weed lass of one, uh, but that year gave us an American, and I'm gonna name all the ones that came out that year of note, and then I'll tell you which one I think was the best. American Werewolf in London, debated heavily, but when you see the number one, I think, or my pick, I think this one hair is fucking bugging me. It's like somewhere right there. I think I got it. No, it, now it's worse. Where are you? Anyway, so 1981, American Wolf in London, The Beyond, The Burning, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow on TV, Dead and Buried, Friday the 13th Part 2, Final Exam, Fun House, Halloween 2, The Howling, House by the Cemetery, Monster Club, My Bloody Valentine, Possession, um, The Prowler, Scanners, Venom, Wolfen. However, the best horror movie of 1981 has to go to Evil Dead. I mean, it is, it set the standard for the 80s. I'm up to be perfectly honest. This is the def definitive, this is like, you know, of course, this is 81, so you're coming at, you know, 80 is kind of like a buffer year for like the best of the 70s into like, and now like a new transition because of the year. And 1981. Evil Dead is the greatest 80s horror movie. It is the 80s horror movie. You know, honestly, maybe Evil Dead, it, it is the, it is, actually, it is the defining early 80s horror movie until Evil Dead 2, which is then the defining horror movie from that point on of the fucking 80s. Like, legit, just in terms of almost what people think of the genre, because it's everything. It's terror, it's comedy, it's all that rolled into one. Evil Dead takes the fucking cake uh, for 1981. Moving on up to 1982. That gave us Alone in the Dark, Basket Case, Creep Show, Friday the 13th, Part 3, Halloween 3, um, Man Man, Pieces, Poltergeist, Slumber Party Massacre. But I am going with, I gotta keep, I'm doing this live and the weed is kicking in all fucking ready. Obviously, it's gotta be the fucking thing. Uh, and it, 1982 was the, one of the rare years on here. It wasn't fucking hard to pick which one it should be. It was like, it's, it's the fucking thing, 100%. You know, the sci-fi horror of the 80s. Uh, you know, next, you know, debatable with aliens, that's, although that's action horror, action sci-fi horror. This is sci just pure, this is a 50-50. Different ratios um, in terms of its alienness, so to speak. Uh, outside and within, you know, they both have the, the, the rape kind of things. Uh, you know, well, more so rape, but uh, I can't say rape on you too. Uh, fuck, this weed is fucking hitting so hard and I have so far to go. This is gonna be the wildest one of the month. Fuck, I am floating 20 fucking feet off the ground right now. The thing, John Carpenter's one of his best. I'm not saying it is his best. I won't, I won't put that out there just yet, but moving on up to 1983. That gave us another Carpenter classic, Christine, Cujo, Deadly Spawn, The Hunger, The Keep, The Mor uh, Mortuary, Mausoleum. Okay, not the mortuary, but just mortuary, because there, there's also the mortuary. Uh, Mausoleum, Sleepaway Camp, Video Drone, The Twilight Zone, the fucking movie. Fuck you, John Landis. Uh, but 1983 has to go. Whew, I am so fucking stoned. To Psycho 2, the most underrated horror sequel of all time. Because the original is so revered, people just, just don't even see the second one. The second one is so 
fucking good. If you have not seen it, the hype is real. It is a good, it is such a good fucking movie. So One of the best sequels. Legit. If you haven't seen it, fucking watch it. God damn. 1984. Uh, not quite as Orwellian, or you know, we're more Orwellian now. It, it, he missed it by 40 years. With 2024, uh, is you know the start of Big Brother and all this like true shit. If you know this shit hits the fan, dating myself, I wish. But um, 84, Children of the Corn, Company of Wolves, Friday Four, Gremlins, Night of the Comet, Razorback, and Chud. But 1984 goes to Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, the OG, Robert England, Wes Craven classic, one of the greatest films of all time in any genre, uh, in my opinion, and the best horror film of 1984. Uh, moving on up to 1985, that gave us the underrated, criminally underrated, The Bride, uh, Creature, Day of the Dead. Um, Friday Five, Ghoulies Five, no, Ghoulies, sorry, Friday Five, Ghoulies, Howling Two, Life Force, Nightmare Two, Reanimator, Return of the Living Dead, Silver Bullet, The Stuff, Vampire Hunter fucking D, uh, but 1985 has to go to Fright Night. Uh, still to this day, one of the most definitive vampire movies ever. Iconic. The remake is super fucking good, too. Uh, one of the best horror remakes ever. God, I'm so fucking stoned. <sighs> 1986 is the fucking fly. I am so fucking stoned. Uh, the, that was also April Fool's Day. Chopping Mall, Critters, Demons 2, Deadly Friend, Friday 6, Henry, The Hitcher, House of Vader Samars, Little Shop of Horrors, Maximum Overdrive, Night of the Creeps, Raw Head Rex, Spookies, Terror Vision, Texas Chainsaw 2, Trolls, Witchboard, but 86 is a fucking fly. No questions. Uh, so that gives, going on to 1987, fuck, I, I still feel, I have so far to go. I have so far to go to get this fucking done. 1987, Angel Heart, Bad Taste, Blood Diner, Blood Frenzy, Blood Harvest, Blood Hook, Blood Lake, Blood Rage, Blood Sisters, Bloody New Year, Bloody Wednesday, Cannibal, Hookers, Drugs and Cats, Living Together, Creep Show 2, Dolls, Evil Dead 2, The Gate, The Hidden House 2, Lost Boys, Necromantic, Nightmare 3, Opera, Prince of Darkness, not gonna get a fucking sip. The 1987 goes to Hellraiser. Angels to some, demons to others. Something like that. I think I had it fucking reversed it. Fucking classic. The goth horror of the 80s is fucking Hellraiser. These movies are, no matter how goofy they are, they're always fucking disturbing. So fucking disturbing. And Hellraiser is fucking amazing in the best horror film 1987. That was a stacked fucking year, but I defend this fucking choice. If you had to pick one for the fucking decade and the, as the film of the year for horror, it's gotta be fucking Hellraiser. Uh, 1988, we had Black Roses, The Blob, The Brain, Child's Play, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, Friday 7, Fright Night 2, Halloween 4, Hellraiser 2, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, The Lady in White, Maniac Cop, Monkey Shines, Night of the Demons, Nightmare 4, Phantasm 2, Pumpkinhead, Return of the Living Dead 2, Sleep Away Camp 2, Slugs, Waxwork. The 1988 is going straight to Child's Play. The Find a Fucking Genre, boom, 1988. That's the most important film of the decade uh, for that year is Child's Play for fucking horror. It's fucking legit. It's still going today. Fucking stronger than ever. Not quite as strong as the body horror genre of 1980, the best horror film 1989, which was Society. Uh, also that year, Black Rose was the Blob, Brain, Child's Play, Dark, wait, no, 89, fuck. 976 Evil, Chud 2, The Fly 2, Friday 8, Halloween 5, Howling 5, Leviathan, Nightmare 5, Pet Cemetery, Puppet Master, Things, uh, Vampire's Kiss, Warlock, The Woman in Black, but 1989, Society for me. This is the hot one. Uh, it's, it's, there's nothing like it even today. And it's still fucking fresh and unique every time I fucking watch it. It's fucking incredible. And that's the best horror film of 1989. But then it leads us to 1990, the transitional year for horror. 
uh, as with the contenders, Arachnophobia, Bride of Reanimator, Basket Case 2, Child's Play 2, Death by Temptation, Exorcist 3, Flatliners, Frankenhooker, Ghost Gremlins 2, It, Jacob's Ladder, Leatherface, Texas, Chainsaw Massacre 3, Misery, Night of the Living Dead, Remake, Troll 2, Yo, Society is the best one I know. God, I got to get done with this, which I pretty much am by revealing that for 1990, I think the best horror film of the decade for that year was Tremors. Fight me. The best horror film of 1990, 100% is goddamn Tremors. And I am so stoned and got to get off of this fucking feed and just chill my fucking ass out. So subscribe right here if you like this crazy fucking content. Let me know what video this is down in the comments below. And until next time, fuckers, stay fucking. Where's my fucking transition? Stay fucking.